If you're building your website or app in an AI coding tool like Lovable, then you might be wondering, how do I get the best output from using this tool? Well, today I'm gonna help you become a pro designer and builder in Lovable by going through five top tips to get the best output possible. If you don't know me, my name is Chris, and for the last 15 years, I've been designing apps and advising startups on product and design, and I believe the next wave of incredible businesses is gonna be built using these AI tools. And so with that said, Let's get straight into Lovable and go through these five tips to becoming a pro Lovable designer. Build great products. Build great products. So this is Lovable, which many of you will already be familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, Lovable is a way to go from text to an app in just minutes, just from a prompt to create websites and web apps, just using the power of AI. And my first tip here if you're designing a building in Lovable, is to start from really incredible references. And by that, I mean designs that are incredibly high quality already. Just like any other AI tool, it works really, really well when you give it great references to work from and tell it what you want something to look like with an image or a screenshot. And so there are a couple of places that you can find really good inspiration, specifically for websites and apps. For websites, one of my favorites is curated.design. They have all of these different websites that are in different categories. They're curated based on how good the design is for them. So you can be sure that all of these are super high quality design and you basically just pick a website that you like, you open it up in a new window and then you can just screenshot this with a screenshot tool, whatever screenshot tool you're kind of using, just screenshot that website and then use those images in Lovable, attach them and tell Lovable to build it in that style. What you can even do here, if you wanna go a bit a step further with this as well, is to actually inspect the code, or you can get browser extension tools that will do this as well, to find out what fonts they're using, what colors they're using, all of that sort of stuff, and then add that into your text description as well. Another really good place for website design inspiration is a website called godly.website, which again has a load of different categories of incredibly designed websites. I tend to find these ones are a bit more like edgier and designy, so they have a lot more like animations and stuff going on, which you can kind of see from all of the stuff moving on this page anyway. And another really good reference if you're designing an app is Mobbin. And this one gets talked about loads, but this has hundreds and hundreds of screens that are taken from all of the best apps on the App Store or the Play Store so that you can just copy and download all of those references. Just by signing up for an account, you get access to some for free or you can pay for an account to get access to everything. And again, they're just in these categories and you can choose a category and you can kind of go to the app screen down, copy these, it's copied the screen image to the clipboard, I can come over to Lovable and I can just paste it straight into the Lovable um, chat field here. Super, super easy. Today I am gonna go from this, this example, which is Vercel's State of AI page, which I really love because it's just such a different design and it kind of uses this grid thing with mono-spaced fonts and I'm just being a bit of a design nerd here, so I'm gonna use this one put it into Lovable and see what it comes back with. Again, I'm just gonna screenshot this and then drag and drop those images into Lovable when I create that first prompt. Quick break in the episode to talk about my community for product builders who actually wanna make a profit from what they're building. If you're building a product, whether that be a SaaS tool, a web app, an iOS app, or an Android app, and you actually wanna make a profit, then this is the community for you. It's called the Product to Profit Academy. I'll be sharing courses, tutorials, tips, and all of my frameworks that I've learned over the last 15 years of working with startups and advising startups on product and design in my Product to Profit Blue blueprint so that you can benefit from everything that I've learned when you're building your product. So if you're building something and you actually want to make a profit from it, head over to buildgreatproducts.com forward slash profit to sign up to the waitlist we're launching soon. And that leads me into the second tip here to become a pro lovable user is to start from a really, really detailed and great first prompt. AI generally has a tendency to learn based on what you've 
told it in the previous conversation. And so we really wanna start from as close to our final design as we can get. So I'm gonna be really, really explicit here about what to create. And another way that you can do this, if you're not familiar with design terminology, is you can actually just go over to something like a ChatGPT. You can paste the link of the website that you wanna copy, and you can just so as a an experienced prompt engineer and a website designer, so again, really good to give ChatGPT context of the role that you want it to play here. Create me a prompt for a website that follows the exact style of the link provided. The website will be a landing page for a creative AI agency providing AI first design services for startups. So you can see here, ChatGPT is creating a prompt for me to put into Lovable where it's describing the style of the website that I've linked. So minimalist, dark themed aesthetics with high contrast fluid animations, full screen immersive hero section, smooth scroll trigger transitions and sections, split screen layout, sections to include. That's great. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna add some detail to this, but I'm actually just gonna copy this prompt over to Lovable. I'm gonna put that into Lovable and I'm also going to attach the screenshots that I took. So I've put in my screenshots here of the website that I want to copy, that Vercel website, and I've copy and pasted in the ChatGPT prompt. I'm gonna just add a couple more things here just so that it can be really explicit about what it's creating. I'm gonna tell it to use a monospaced font for headings and accent text, and then to use a specific font for the body copy that I know I want to use. So let's add those things in here and then I'll submit them. So whilst Lovable is building the website here, I'm gonna talk about my third tip for becoming a pro Lovable builder, and that is to group amends together when you're sending them back in the chat. And the reason I say this is because in Lovable you're getting charged based on the amount of messages that you send to it. Now obviously in Lovable you can click this chat button down here and you can just chat back and forth with the AI and ask it questions but if you're actually wanting it to make amends it's best to group those amends together and that way you're going to get the maximum amount of value out of the credits and the messages that you do have on your account even if you're paying for an account you're still paying for a certain number of messages and that also as a side bonus for sending a lot of amends in one go it means you can go away and working on some on something else and lovable will maybe take 5 10 maybe maybe 15 minutes to actually go through those amends sometimes. And so you can then go back to it when you hear the notification from Lovable in your browser, just to see what it's done and then make those next set of changes rather than just going back and forwards over and over again with small little changes and using up all of your messages, spending all of your time just in Lovable building. So there you can see Lovable has kind of followed the design reference that I put in. It's done a lot of the things right here, but it's also got a lot of things not quite quite right. So even when you start from really, really good references, you're still going to get a lot of things that you want to change in this first version that you get back. And so what I would do here, based on that third tip of grouping amends together, is just to go through your page or your app and just write down all the changes that you would make as if you were kind of writing feedback for an employee to go away and do or a developer to go away and make those changes and then paste all of those amends back into the lovable chat for it to kind of go and work through in one go i would say try to limit the amount of stuff that you're sending over you don't want to send over like a vast amount of stuff if you're sending over too much it's gonna miss some things so just bear that in mind when you're grouping these amends together. And so the fourth tip here as well, in order to get the best output from Lovable, would be to tell Lovable what not to do. So if you're making amends, if I'm putting some amends in the chat here, which I'd say like, okay, when I, it does this weird thing when I scroll on the animated, like, heading here, what I wanna actually do, let's reload this and see what the animations are on the rest of the page. So those animations are good. You get animations for the rest of the content when I scroll down, which is great. So what I would say here is based on that tip of telling Lovable what not to do as well as what to do, I would say remove, when I scroll down, the heading overlaps um, other elements in the hero section. I want to remove this part of the, of the animation 
but don't change the load animations for any of the sections when I scroll down the page. What AI and what Lovable and what a lot of these AI code editors tend to do is they will go off and do other things in the context of what you suggested that you don't necessarily want. So telling it what not to do, what not to remove or what to keep is really, really important to making sure that you're gonna get the best results from the amends when you're working with Lovable. And then the fifth tip here for becoming a pro Lovable builder is to talk in the language of code. And that can seem a little bit scary, but basically what that means is to talk in the language of things like Tailwind, which is the CSS styling that most AI code builders start off with, or Shadcn, or talk in the language of React if you know that a little bit more, or talk in the language of kind of website de design and development. And if you don't know that, that's okay. What you can actually do here with Lovable is you can go into the chat mode and you can say, I wanna make this change, but can you, can you give me a prompt to make that change best in Lovable? And it will then kind of give you a prompt back and then you can put that into the main chat window of Lovable so that it can go off and make that amend for you. And that's gonna really help say things like, oh, I want to change, instead of saying, can you make the text smaller here? What you can do is you can actually say like the exact tailwind styling class for the size that you wanna change that heading to and ask Lovable to give you that information or the other way of doing this is you can actually go into dev mode in Lovable and you can, you've got your main page here, index.tsx, which is open automatically when you go into dev mode. And you can see in all of these elements is these the under class name, are these classes. And this is your tailwind classes that tell it how to style the different sections. So if I go, so I'm actually gonna go into the hero section here to show you what I mean by this. So if you look at the H1, for example, this is your primary heading on the page. You can see that you've got text XL here. You've also got all of these different breakpoint and um, text sizes as well. So I can actually just change all of the text sizes straight from the code here if I want to, or I can just use those class names in the chat with Lovable to tell it exactly what to do. And the more you kind of use this, the more familiar you kind of get with those things. So you'll start to be able to make more and more accurate amends over time just by understanding the kind of language of code and the language that Lovable is kind of talking in when it's building stuff. And hopefully those five tips have helped you understand how you can become a better Lovable builder and get better quality output from the prompts that you're putting into Lovable and other AI code editors. Hopefully those five tips will help you become a better builder and designer in Lovable or any other AI coding tool. If you've got any of your own tips or your own suggestions for using Lovable or any other AI coding tool, then just put them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. And you can sign up to my newsletter over at buildgreatproducts.com to get all of my startup and product frameworks for free. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Build great products. Build great products.